Here's the statute. Expungement means the extraction and isolation of all records on file within any court, detention or correction facility, law enforcement or criminal justice agency, concerning the person's detention, apprehension, arrest, detention, I said, I guess it was detection over there, trial or disposition of an offense within the criminal justice system. Here's what goes into expunged records. Complaints, warrants, arrests, commitments, processing records, fingerprints, photographs, index cards, rap sheets, and judicial docket records. I don't see DNA in there. We have to talk about that a little bit. What do you tell your clients when they walk in and say, you know, uh, Mr. Brain, we want to get a, uh, an expungement? What do you tell them? I tell them what an expungement is and, more importantly, what an expungement isn't. What do you say? Um, an expungement is the segregation of records so that they become generally unavailable when someone does an official search. I then define official search. An official search is a search that someone does with the court system or with law enforcement, actually including the FBI. Um, but there are other places where records exist that are not going to be directly affected by the expungement. For example, database, uh, background checking companies that have their own databases, they're not going to be notified when an expungement is granted, so those records are going to remain there unless someone does something beyond the expungement process. What do you tell your clients the benefit of the expungement is, though, when you're trying to sell them on the, no, the, the utility of it? Well, the benefit of the expungement, there's a couple of benefits. First of all, um, collateral consequences, such as you were discussing before, for the most part, are taken away. They are legally permitted to say, even under oath, with exceptions, that it never happened. And, of course, um, you have the relief from uh, many of the collateral consequences. Would you ever say to a client, though, look, the records are going to be destroyed, they won't exist anymore, no one will ever know about it, and you can always say that it never happened? Well, Would you say that to a client? I would not say that. Because it's legally incorrect, right? It does, it's not the way it happens. And a client who got that information would be being given misinformation and could not make an intelligent and uh, knowing determination as to whether to hire the attorney. Would you agree that, with that? I agree with that. Uh, now, in that regard, I'll go one step further. When I explain the, um, the limitations of getting an expungement, I am not aware of any client who ever decided they wanted expungement and then changed their mind as a result of my telling them about uh, the limitation. Very similar to what Alan says. I mean, I'm specific on quoting the statute in two places. 52-1, uh, the words extraction and isolation, and make sure that they understand what that means. And, and I always specifically say, look, they're not going to go in a shredder. They're, they're going to be separated from the rest and explain kind of what people and when there would be access to those. And, uh, and then I also tell them the specific language that will be in the order that's signed by the judge, that the event or matter never occurred and the petitioner may answer any questions accordingly. And it, um, it kind of goes, we, we touched on it just briefly, some of the non-official sources. Um, when people are concerned about that, that's one of the um, um, things I can tell them to, uh, you know, put their mind at ease, that they're always going to have this order. It says that it's signed by a judge, and if that ever does come up because some company hadn't cleared it, that I would write a letter and, and you know, explain everything. It does ring the bell, but, uh, but to the extent it, it does come up, I always explain that and offer that. So if I had a client here and I said to my client, look, the records are going to be taken from where they are, and they're going to be placed in an area, you know, they're going to be extracted and yep. put in a place where they're isolated. Once a judge signs the order, they're really not accessible to the public at all. And if anybody went to look, they should get back an answer from the governmental agency that was holding the record that it doesn't, there's just no record of it. Right. You exactly. agree with that? No record found is okay. what I, the phrase I use. Do you think you could ever go wrong by just showing your client the statute? Because nope. then there's really no question about you know, what you said. Yeah, like I said, the key words, extraction and isolation, but then, you know, uh, also what the order actually says signed by the judge. So they're, they're what I focus on. Now, on the 2C5227, again, if an order of expungement is granted, the arrest, conviction, and proceedings related thereto shall be deemed not to have occurred, and petition to answer any questions relating to their occurrence accordingly. Do you show them that language as well? I usually point that, because most of my clients, I'd say 90%, I never meet in person. We usually speak on the phone, so I just, you know, recite that to them. What is the main motivating uh, factor for your clients in terms of coming to you in the first place? Number one is employment, of course, and then um, adoptions are a close second, people that want to purchase a firearm, um, but number one is employment. What type of employment? Are we talking about government employment or employment with... Uh... All different types. I mean, I get a kick out of it. Uh, 
I almost find it to be a strange subset of people that uh, I've got a bunch of guys with pretty decent records as far as how bad and how many matters and dead set all of them they must be police officers someday and I just find it like odd uh, but I do get many of them that I expunge the order and they do become police officers. I mean still they've got to disclose it but I'm advised uh, or have learned through the grapevine that uh, it looks better if it's expunged although it'll come up you know typically a lot of clients will come to me and say I just put in the application and the chief told me to get this expunged before I come back right um, so yeah that's the weird the weird set of people that uh, that want to be cops generally speak, all types of jobs generally speaking it seems to me there's three main categories that you should tell your client about where you're going to have to reveal the fact that you have an expungement notwithstanding 2c 5227 and that would be with law enforcement corrections and the judiciary do you agree with that as a proposition yep those are the three set forth in the statute and of course there's a couple others that I don't know if you want me to mention them now sure or, why not um, particularly medical board uh, if your client is going to eventually sit for the board uh, I wouldn't say it's an interesting question what I would say in that regard is get the records first um, and have them on hand I, I might still advise the client to answer no I'm on that question, but immigration, that's the other big area where I believe it's, you know, our statutes are um, trumped by federal law and they do require to disclose it. So, um, but similarly in that one, if, if you're going to have one, um, get the records first as far as police reports or dispositions because they'll be not unavailable afterwards. Immigration and national security positions also. Um, and federal. I, I want to kind of underscore something you just said because I think it's vitally important that everybody understand this. And now I'm going to ask you to see if you agree with this. You have a client, you know the client's going to retain you. you. It seems like the client otherwise is going to be eligible. Would you say to your client, look, I want you to gather up all the police reports you can get. If you don't have them now, go get them. Any copies of uh, your conviction, all the court records, anything related to this, get it. Put it in a safe deposit box and leave it there because you may need to show it sometime and you're not going to be able to get it once these records are expunged. Yep. Do, do you discuss that with your clients, sir? Uh? I should, but really... Um I think I limit that discussion to situations where the client has given me an indication that they are going to actually need it for something. I'd agree with that. If it's if they say a lot of my clients want to be real estate agent or stockbroker, or I'm in law school. In those in law school, I would tell them definitely right. to get that before. But um, the question that I'm asking clients now, as a result of uh, I guess it would be the uh, Padilla decision a year, year and a half ago. I didn't used to ask clients this, but now I, prospective clients, now I ask them, are you a citizen? This is City versus Kentucky. Yeah. Right. Because if they are not a citizen and they ever plan to become a citizen, the uh, immigration people are going to want to see all kinds of things. Sticklers. The, the, uh, the complaint, the uh, court decision, the possibly the discovery. And like you just said, Bob, they're not going to be able to get that um, easily once the record is expunged. So it's important that you advise your clients, especially if it's you have some things in play, immigration, corrections, um, Police, judiciary. law school. Uh, well, that would really kind of, the judiciary subsumes yeah, law school, yeah, anything being Police. admitted to the bar. But corrections, judiciary, law enforcement, medical, I'm immigration. Not, I'm not so sure. Medical, medical. yeah, maybe, uh, I actually, as I said, that kind of second tract on it. Immigration was what I meant to say. Okay. So, but these are the types of situations when your client tells you that's in the cards somewhere down the line, you would advise your client to go out and get all that stuff and put it in a safe deposit box someplace so it'll be available. Yep. I think in the medical case, that still can't be a horrible answer to go get that stuff if that's all we're talking about. I mean, the bigger question is whether or not you divide, divulge it, but I don't think it can hurt to have them um, for those purposes. I know it was, uh, there's a possibility, I believe, that something like the, um, ethics examination or not examination but inquiry during law school there might be a similar one and again it's a little bit I, I think there's a good argument it wouldn't have to be revealed but it can't hurt for them to have those I think if you have a file and it's a criminal or a disorderly person in nature something that's you can one day expunge even in ordinance that you retain that file forever that you don't destroy that file yeah, you know what rich too I think you have it down in your in your practice since you do so much criminal work don't you have it like these, that you're a actually diary. contacting these people down the line? Oh, certainly. You, you have it like a tickler file or something like that? Yes, yes. See, that's... Uh, but the important thing is to, to hold the file forever. It seems to me that the trick to this whole business is knowing at the file, you look at it, with incom admittedly incomplete information with your client sitting there, and you've got to make a determination as to whether or not there's going to be a fight. 
in the sense that you know that a certain number of expungements are going to go through on the papers without any problem. There are others that are going to be a fight with the prosecutor's office. You just know because of the legal issues, okay? So, Alan, how do you handle that? I basically have two fees with some modifications. I look at um, what I think is going to be involved, and I call the expungement either what I call a plain vanilla expungement or a complex expungement. A plain vanilla expungement is an expungement where it appears to me I'm going to prepare the papers, have the client uh, notarize it, send it to the court, and do all of the uh, procedural work that has to be done. And in due course, the judge is going to sign the petition, the prosecutor is going to approve, and everybody lives happily ever after. For that, I charge $1,500.